so far. Dennis Allen there, now playing it full forward. And he wants a little bit more going, and he wants Cork, I'm sure, to avail of the chances that are coming their way. This is a critical period in the match. If Meath can weather this storm and strike over a score or two of their own, they could well be back in the driving seat. Stafford kicking into space. Quite on his game this afternoon, Brian Stafford. Coyle neatly inside to P.J. Gillick. It was blocked by Coleman Carrigan. Or rather by uh, Tony Davis, I should say. This is Coleman Carrigan. And that's a good bit of forward play by Barry Coffey, drifting away by, from Martin O'Connell. Dennis Allen holding it up. Waiting for Tompkins to come from a deep position. Some bunching right in front of him now. Tompkins going it on his own. Well, it's something he's been criticised for in the past. An inability maybe to link up with the forwards as everyone in the Cork team would wish. Certainly there were players inside that time that he could have played it into. So two points the margin. Cork leading at the moment. And there are 14 minutes remaining in the All-Ireland Final. Cunahan takes. Holds on well. Tries to carve out an opening. And unlock this defence. Cunahan again taking it back to Dennis Allen. On the left boot and wide of the target. And that's three or four really good chances now in the space of five minutes. In Cork's best period of the match so far. Will all those misses be crucial in the end? A lot of bunching at midfield. Hawk dominant at the minute. The foul on Barry Coffey produces a free in. A free from about 50 metres out from the Meath goal. Tompkins the free taker. He's got six of Cork's ten points so far. He's now got seven of eleven. And Cork lead by a goal, a solitary goal. It's 1-8 for Cork, Meath eight points. And I note now that uh, Meath have switched their marking on Larry Tompkins and PJ Gillig, I think, is the one who's been assigned that particular duty. Cunahan. Oh, beautifully taken by Robbie O'Malley in flight, an important interception. Getting it onto the right boot to Hayes. Well, now with a goal between the teams, remember it's 1 8 for Cork, 8 points for Meath. Meath having to come back if they can. A foul down there, which the referee saw. It may well be. It was a Foul, in fact, after that ball was kicked in, so a free from where the ball lands, which is about 22 metres out. Stafford will be the free taker. This should be a meat score. But it's a crucial one, and there is great pressure on him. Time is running out for the champions. Still holding their balance, but not playing as well as they should be. Or they're being allowed to be, indeed. It's a two-point game. And Brian Stafford has kicked six points. Always calm in a crisis and capable of kicking over those vital points. Cork have taken a bit of a grip at midfield. Tompkins really came into it in the second half. But the game is still there for the taking by either team, champion or challenger. Fahey releases outside to Barry Coffey, the Bishopstown man. Forward into space towards Paul McGrath. Quickly forward for Dennis Allen. Pull down, or is he? No, the referee says play on, I'm giving you an advantage. Dave Barry tries to make the most of it, but it's wide. Hawks 12th wide in the second half. Sean Boylan there is on his feet, as you see. Liam Hayes takes that splendidly from the air. Referee waited to see would anything come of it, and uh, as it didn't, it's going to be a free to me. Stafford trying to get onto it. 
McIntyre toe pokes it forward to Colm O'Rourke on the punch of left foot and it's over the bar. And it's just a one-point game. Colm O'Rourke the scorer. And what odds now, I wonder, a draw in the All-Ireland Football Final, something we haven't had since 1972. Kearns' kick is low to midfield, misses by Castles. Away by Gillick. Players playing out of their skins now to try and get possession. That was a push by Stephen O'Brien on Colm O'Rourke, and he realises the importance of this kick. And he says, as it's from this position, it suits a left-footed kicker. And that's the angle he faces. 1-8 for Cork. Meath, 10 points. It's a bit ambitious. Towards Colum Coyle, and Coyle was pushing now Cahalan in the back, and so it's going to be a free out for Cork. John Kearns in no particular hurry to take this free. Punched down by Martin O'Connell, and here's Hayes galloping through midfield with great style and panache. Sandwich fouled and a free in, and this should be the equaliser. Great run by Hayes, inviting the foul, going through two defenders. They collided upon him, protest their innocence, and Stafford is the one with responsibility once again thrust on his shoulders. His side trailing by a point. The faces in the Meath fans tell the story. Stafford has kicked six points, looking for his seventh. with seven, Larry Tompkins with seven. That's the time remaining. Will we have a winner, I wonder, this afternoon? Kearns kicks. Harlan punches down. Teddy McCarthy, if either side now can produce a score, one wonders whether that will be the winning one. What a finale. We promised you something special, I think, just before the half-time break. And I think you'll have to agree, it has been that. Tense and exciting all the way. And Tompkins is told by Tommy Subaru of Kerry, bring it back just a little bit. This is about 60 metres out, two minutes remaining. It's all tied up. 1-8 for Cork, 11 points for me in a memorable All-Ireland football final. The marking's been tight, the football hasn't always been flowing. But it has been engrossing and gripping, and that is tailing to the right. It's kept in play. No, Poppy Feltel gone. Well, he really struck it well, but didn't quite have the range. But Quillen's in a hurry now with 1.30 to go. Most fans here, I'm sure, have enjoyed the second half. Just one point will do it, I'm sure. Dave Barry is fouled by Colin Coyle, and that's a free in from inside the 45-metre line. Now, we head towards the one-minute point as Colin Coyle shrugs it off. It's going to be Tompkins who will take it. Well, since he came into the Cork Colours last season, I think I've used the phrase that this is the most vital kick he's ever taken. He's just blessed himself. Will the gods smile favourably upon his pleas? The Cork fans are behind the canal goal, waiting for this kick. Will it be a winner? It's on its way. Cork in front. Tompkins has done it. 12 points to 11. Tompkins, the magnificent, with eight points. Now is the Ramid comeback. 25 seconds to go. What a gripping final it's been. Well, what a kick. He may have missed some, but they'll forgive him all of those. O'Connell now in a desperate hurry. Cork, whose last win was in 1973, when Billy Morgan captained. This is O'Connell. Can they get on level terms? Cork must not foul. Mead must get a point. It's a free in.
34, but you'd nearly put the life savings on the man to kick it over from here. But this is immense pressure. Stafford experienced it before, Tompkins experienced it a few minutes ago for Cork. Nine for Cork, 11 points for Meath, 45 seconds into injury time, and the sides are level. Stafford has kicked eight points, Tompkins kicked eight points, the battle of the big two. And I think we're going to have our first replay since 1972, when Offaly were here against Kerry, and one of the Meath players, Liam Hayes, might well have to miss that because of course he's due to go out to Seoul tomorrow morning to cover the Olympic Games I'm headed there as well but now I wonder it's there the referee leaves the game with the court players protesting about that last decision it ends in a draw the first time since 1972 that the match ended level the full-time score was Cork, one goal and nine points. Meath, 12 points. But it was the marvellous Brian Stafford who kicked over that pressure point to make the full-time score. Cork, 1-9. Meath, 12 points. What a finale. What a finale indeed, a dramatic finish, an emotional finish too for some of the players, but they're going to have to go and do it all again. On my panel tonight, we have Enda Collarn and Jack O'Shea. Enda, apart from that dramatic finish, it was a splendid game of football, I thought, all round. Yeah, most enjoyable game. I thought it was one of the best finals for years. And uh, when the game was over, I found it difficult to understand, first of all, why Cork had not won, and secondly, how Meath had managed to draw. You know, but I think uh, that Cork did most of the playing, but uh, it's a tribute to Meath's experience and the great fighting spirit that they came back from a hopeless position and snatched a draw. Jack, apart from not winning, Cork did Munster proud today as well. Yeah, I think they did proud. Uh, but uh, I thought uh, the first 10, 15 minutes of the game was very, very fast and very open. Some great football in it. But then I thought the game died for maybe 5 or 10 minutes uh, towards the end of the first half. And then it really came to life in the second half. Uh, a very, very enjoyable game. I think uh, Cork uh, played uh, very, very attractive football, very good football. Meath, I think, uh, survived really on the crumbs of the game. You know, they, they were... Uh, they weren't getting the proper supply of the ball up front, but uh, when they did get the ball, they took their scores. And I think uh, like Cork had something like 15 wides and meet at five, and I think that just shows the amount of play that Cork had, you know. Well, Enter, there was some nice play by the Cork forwards. When they were moved well, they put together some very good moves. They did. They played the ball around very well. And one thing is they weren't afraid to take on a man. They ran at the meet defenders, and they weren't afraid to take on a man. They would have... Uh, Lead in possession at this stage and in an attacking position, leave Liam Hayes clearing the ball in. But Coleman Corrigan, who had a great game of full back today, comes in front of his man to the ball, gets possession, plays a nice ball down the wing for Paul McGrath, and they continue on, ball into open space. And Denny Allen, the old head in this team, gets the ball. Now he has the confidence and skill to carry it and to beat two lead defenders. And then the vision to see Teddy McCarthy inside and a great turn by Teddy and a goal. Uh, Teddy left unmarked in a position like this for a very bad defender. Another nice, beautiful ball right into his hands. And then a great turn. Kevin Foley doesn't do very well here in covering, but he takes his chance very well. Great sport. He certainly did indeed. Well, Jack Ender mentioned some poor marking by uh, the Meath backs, and that was an aspect of their play today. They still lack this little bit of sharpness. The sparkle isn't there. Mm. Um, the meat defence, like up to now, were, were renowned, you know, for how close they could mark and how tight and how quick they closed down and forwards. But I think today, in the first ten minutes, they got a lesson on the, how to move the ball from one position to the other. Uh, I thought the, the cock forwards moved into tremendous positions. They hit the ball into open space. If the ball was on the left, they switched it across to the right. Uh, you mentioned Dinny Allen, the old head. Uh, Dinny Allen, there's two or three Dinny Allens on the team at this stage. Paul McGrath, Mick McCarthy have taken up his sort of game. They've uh, learned a lot from him, and you could see his, his experience uh, showing that forward line the way. To meet the fence, uh, looked a bit ragged uh, for, at times in the first half, but I think they settled down fairly well. You know, but again, they haven't got the drive that they had last year, uh, that they had in the league final this year. The close marking, the hard hitting, you know, it's, it's not there. And they, they were off their men a lot today. Well, that was an aspect of their play you noticed as well, and uh... yes, I thought they were tired and listless and slow to react and very slow to pick up a man. And we had a lot of examples of quick freeze in that. I think they expected Larry Tompkins to kick a long one here. But we see Dave Barry on his own, left completely unmarked in a position like this. And this happened on many occasions. You can't afford an All-Ireland final to leave forwards of the calibre of Barry or any forward for that matter loose like that. 
and when the ball broke they were very quick to pick it up as well Cork were. Also the Cork backs were much sharper, they were much tighter and they didn't give the mead forwards much opportunity to, to get into a flowing game. No they didn't because whenever the ball came to the mead forwards the Cork backs were on top of them and marked them very very closely and if mead did get possession then they covered them and forced them to kick it away and waste an awful lot of good possession. Uh, they were much faster than the mead defence I thought and the way they covered I was particularly impressed by it because uh, the forwards never got a chance really to have a clear shot at goal or to set up those movements that they usually do. That's right we saw exactly Examples indeed of uh, Brian Stafford getting the ball out towards uh, the sideline and instead of being able to do something constructive with it, having to balloon the ball away. That's correct, Jeff, where he's forced to kick across goal and uh, all they could do is own players would stand up and look at it really. Okay, and, uh, and Jack, thank you for your analysis of the match. Well, and of course, you still have one function to perform for us, and that's name your man of the match. Although we didn't have a winner, we do have a winner of our man of the match for the All-Ireland final. That's true. The man I've selected is Larry Tompkins, though he had a quiet first half, but I thought he was the dominant influence in the game in the second half and scored eight points altogether. Some marvellous points from place balls and uh, from play. So for that reason, I chose him as my man of the match. Well, he certainly came good in the second half, Ender. Yeah, if we look at the exa examples here now, here he is in possession. When it was most needed at the beginning of the second half, and he clips over a great point from long range. And not out of final, this is a great encouragement to any team. Then, from 60 yards out, free kick straight over the bar again. Marvellous encouragement for his team. Well, I'm sure that the Cork supporters will be looking forward to uh, Larry Tompkins doing more of the same in the replay. Now, speaking of that uh, replay, it's scheduled for October the 2nd. Now, there is tonight a doubt about that because it may be put off for a week because of clashes with other major sporting events. However, for the moment, it stands as October the 2nd, although that situation may change tomorrow. Now, the minor match this afternoon are brought into contention Dublin and Kerry, and at least there was a straight result in this one thanks to these two goals from Kerry. So victory then for Kerry in today's minor All-Ireland final. And let's now take a check on the two results from Croke Park today, starting with that senior final. Cork 1-9, Mead 12 points, and that of course, as you know, was a draw. And in the minor final, it was Kerry 2-5, Dublin 5 points. Now a quick look at uh, the rest of the day's sports news and in soccer. The feature match in the Premier League today also ended in a draw in actual fact with a goal apiece. Johnny Walsh scored for Limerick City and Paul Carlisle got Derry's equaliser. Meanwhile, Bohemians showed a return to form, winning in Athlone. St. Pat's didn't experience too much trouble at home to Galway, while Shamrock Rovers just scraped home against Waterford. And Dundalk maintained their unbeaten record by beating Cove Ramblers. Now the detailed score lines in the Opal League Premier Division at Lone Town nil, Bohemians 2, Dundalk 3, Cove Ramblers 1, Limerick City 1, Derry City 1, St. Patrick's Athletic 3, Galway United 0 and Shamrock Rovers 1, Waterford United 0. And in the First Division, Bray Wanderers 0, Empha 0, Drogheda United 2, Home Farm 1, Monaghan United 1, Finn Harps 1, Sligo Rovers 3, Longford Town 1 and UCD 4, Newcastle West 2. 
Golf news now, and as expected, Seve Ballesteros won the first prize of over £70,000 in the Lancome Trophy Tournament. He had a final round of 71 to win by four shots from the fellow Spaniard, Jose Marie Olafabal. Ronan Rafferty had a 63 today to finish in fifth position, and he won £20,000. And that indeed is where we leave it tonight on the Sunday game. My thanks to Enda Collar and Jack O'Shea for joining me on the programme tonight. Now this, of course, was to have been the last Sunday game of the season. But now we must do it all over again and want to look forward to the replay if today's drawn match is anything to go by. So I hope you'll join us for that. Well, at least we had one clear-cut decision from today's senior final, and that was the selection of Larry Tompkins as our Sunday game man of the match. Now, whether he was injured or not, well, he nearly hamstrung Meath today. And now they're writing ballads about him as well. From all of us here on the programme, good night to you. Down in Parkiki, on Monster Fine.